Sidekick and younger superhero assemble teams are some of my favorite groups of all comic book teams. Young Justice, Teen Titans, Young Avengers, Web Warriors, some of the X-Men lineups like the Kitty Pride Marauders and the countless others. There's just something about the youthful team-ups that makes a really compelling story. But you ever wondered what a squad of Christian youth group folks tired of the restrictions placed on them by their leaders would be like? Yeah, probably not. But the last gen are basically your Christian Teen Titans in a world where Christian superheroes are on a God-given mission to subdue the premature rise of the Antichrist. Yeah, the Remnant comic series is wild. If evangelical Christian terrorist group raids on the Vatican and using holy scripture verses to counteract subliminal messages is your kind of thing, then why not consider leaving a like on the video and even subscribing for our continued coverage of this series along with other Christian and non-Christian fictional stories with emphasis on those that have comic panels like this. Confronts the X-Men stating, your plan to kill your god failed, now it's your god's turn. A massive battle ensues, X-Man and his horsemen of salvation versus the X-Men. Jean Grey even sends for backup as they knew it was gonna take everyone to defeat him. They tell us we are too young, that we are likely the last generation of heroes. They try to protect us and shield us from the battle, but we have a voice too, a calling that is equally as important as theirs. Like good boys and girls, we listen, we hang out in our costumes, we take on menial tasks. You know the stuff that is safe and boring. What if we decided to create our own path? What if we went out and showed them what true heroes do? No fancy headquarters or high-tech gadgets. Just an abandoned space and a group of friends committed to make a difference. Let's see where this takes us. At that abandoned space turned headquarters for the last gen, Atoman and Gemstar are the first to arrive and contemplate whether or not this is a good idea, especially given how overprotective the remnants are, as well as wondering if the others will even show up. But right on cue, Jellybean, Calvary, Anaki Prime, and Trash Polka show up to the hideout to commence their first meeting. The group sits around the table chatting over pizza and soda basically venting to each other about all the rules and restrictions placed on them by the Remnant. Though their abandoned building headquarters isn't like the five-star accommodation of the Remnant HQ, Jellybean is just glad to not have the feeling of the old heads breathing down their necks. With Calvary adding, he is glad to be free of the nonsense missions, along with Ottoman stating that they treat us like we're incompetent. We've passed all training. We have been proven in battle. So what's the problem? They don't trust us, we're too young, blah blah blah, Polka response. Followed by Anaki flat out saying, we don't need them. We can do just fine on our own. We'll show them. After the venting session, the group then begins the cleanup process of their new headquarters. But during the cleanup, a report of Epps disturbance not too far away from them in Styler City comes across the radio. With the group taking this as the perfect opportunity to spring into action and show the remnant that they have what it takes to operate on their own. Who are they going to fight for the first of the books group mission? Well, we shall hopefully find out in the next issue of Last Gen whenever that comes out. Though the story was short, this issue was actually loaded with hero info cards and short stories of the group members, starting with Ottoman II. Adam Sanders is the typical teen frat boy. Adam is funny, outgoing, and not very serious about most things in life. Adam can be pretty impulsive and reckless, but has a heart of gold and is always willing to go out of his way to help a friend. Adam has a strong sense of family and values close bonds with them and his friends. Adam's suit causes a genetic disruption of his cells, giving him the powers of the atom. While wearing the suit, he possesses the power of flight, superhuman strength, and the ability to form force blasts of intensive atomic energy. Aaron Morris, who goes by the code name Anaki Prime Rock, grew up in an abusive and neglectful family. At the age of 15, Aaron ran away from home and lived in the woods with his punk rock crew. Aaron felt that he had found his family with the crew. But when things also turned abusive, Aaron ran from there. Alone on the run, God sent Grok to help Aaron and give him the tools he needed to turn his life around. Anaki has no natural powers, but his battle suit, which was designed by Tech 9, amplifies his strength by 10 times and is designed to mimic his streetwear. He is also well trained in hand to hand combat by Man of War and Thief in the Night, 
The suit also has built-in spikes which can be used as projectiles that can inflict all manners of temporary effects such as paralysis and loss of sight. Hiro Yamamoto aka Atomic Thunderbolt grew up in a mixed culture household. A Japanese father and a white mother, he was embarrassed by his Japanese name and features that set him apart from others at his school. His outlook would soon change when he was visited by Man of War and Grub. They informed him of his lost heritage that his grandfather was a World War II hero who was stripped of his powers and freedom because of his Japanese heritage. The suit irradiates a special energy that gives the user incredible powers. Hero is still learning about how the suit works but he has since been able to utilize the power of fast flight speeds, shooting atomic blasts and increasing his strength while wearing. I covered Calvary's trash bulkers and jumpstars in four cards in previous installments of our coverage of the series. So I'll insert snippets from those videos here. Daniel Christiansen believed his life was cursed. He seemed to go from one disaster to another in life. After being fired from his high paying job, evicted from his home and dumped by his girlfriend, Daniel thought things couldn't get any worse. After walking home from the grocery store, Daniel was held up by the superpowered villain Blue Flame. After saying a silent prayer, Daniel found his hand shooting a steam of high temperature ice which immobilized Blue Flame. Rewarded for his patience in suffering, Daniel now possessed the ability to call forth a variety of powers that match the situation he was facing. His abilities trigger when his faith is activated. Taking the name Calvary, he fights injustice alongside his friends in the Tribulation Task Force. Calvary's power sounds so cool, it reminds me of like one of my more favorite niche X-Men heroes called Darwin, who was able, his body will, ev will evolve to like for him to survive so regardless of what the situation was his body would just adapt to it but the difference with calvary is that it's all based on his faith in god which as a christian fictional media nerd is just like that's one of the coolest powers it's like it's like infinite possibilities pretty much ariana sanchez aka trash polka is a black belt in taekwondo and has learned the skills from other fighting disciplines Trash Poker uses innovative low-tech items to assist her in crime fighting. She has been known to throw blackout balls which are tattoo ink to temporarily blind her opponents, sharp throwing objects that contain sedation properties and low-impact rubber bullets to stun opponents. Ariana is a second-generation American who grew up in a poor family. Ariana was bullied in school because of the way she dressed and because of her family's financial situation. Ariana's father enrolled her in a taekwondo class to help her build confidence and be able to defend herself if needed. Ariana's instructor was also a master tattoo artist and eventually Ariana became his apprentice. Ariana became interested in helping other women who were struggling and worked in a domestic violence shelter. So moved by the women she encountered, she became a costumed vigilante to get justice for the women she served. They call me Gemstar, but I wasn't always the flashy super girl I am today. And yes, I love to joke and have fun. I was a pretty ordinary girly girl. I didn't think I'll ever say that. I loved my boy bands, being stylish, and hanging out with my friends. Most of all, I loved ESP. I was fascinated by people who would so selfishly risk their lives for others. My parents were conservative and thought I was idol worshipping. But really, it was just innocent admiration. Something to aspire to. When I would talk about heroes with my friends, especially about that cute Raython, they can't see that either, they would just roll their eyes. But still, I loved talking about them. I never in a million years thought that one day I would be a hero. I must admit that a day didn't go by that I didn't pray that God would allow me the honor of being an ESP. Then one day my prayers would be answered. One ordinary day, something extraordinary happened in Silent City. The ESP known as Blue Flame, a real jerk, began attacking the city for some reason. Guess who came to the rescue? Yes, Raythor. Although I should have fled and found a safe place, I stood there and watched cheering for my hero. During the battle, some sort of rip in the sky appeared and Raythor and Blue Flame were sucked into it. But not before a huge downpour of debris. I was struck in the head and knocked unconscious. That is, that, that is, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> When I woke, there was a beautiful glowing gem in the rubble around me, so I took it and made a nice necklace out of it. I noticed that when I wore the gem, I felt more alive, stronger. 
and one day I found myself floating off the ground. So what did I do? Panic? Fear? No. I made a costume and became a hero. Not long after putting on the costume, the hero Grok came to visit and offered me a training position with the underground group, the Tribulation Task Force. My dream did come true, but now the hard part begins, learning what this gem can do and how to best use it in service of others. But even still, I am just an ordinary girl at heart. Gemstar is one of those, you know, like random civilians in those superhero movies that they see in the big brawl, but instead of running to the evacuation point, they just stand up on the sidewalk looking at what's going on. To end up this issue, we get a little monologue from Angie, aka Jelly. My name is Angie. Yes, I'm black, but not some stereotype. I come from a middle class family in the suburbs. I'm a student, don't do drugs or listen to hip hop. On my spring break this year, I decided to do something productive. I decided to spend my time helping the children at the southern border. Bad mistake. I was abducted by a group of MS-13 gang members. They work for some rogue scientists who use abducted people for his wild experiments. During captivity, I had the opportunity to talk to people who grew up less fortunate than me, those who had no one looking out for them, or nothing to really go back to. I was forever changed by their stories, but that wasn't the only thing that would change me. Over the next few weeks, I was poked, prodded, and injected with God knows what. What they didn't expect was that whatever they were doing gave me strange new abilities. Then I met Grok and everything changed. And with Angie's story out of the way, let's dive into our Christian fiction judgment scale of this issue. The story, I'd give it a 3 out of 5. Though the actual last gen aspect of the comic was pretty short and really was a setup for the next issues or future stories to come, the individual info cards, backstories and the reason behind why each member is the way they are were all good reads, even though I think that the story it does need some ironing out to really be on par with the young superhero genre of comics. Which leads right into the artwork and creativity, which I give a 4 to 5. Solid artwork and really creative characters, just as I did in our previous installment of drawing a comparison between Thief and the Night and Batman, as well as comparing the last gen to any young superhero squad, I mainly did that comparison out of humor and to draw a point of reference, as everyone in the last gen are their own unique characters that I haven't been able to put a year. This is clearly just a cheesy Christian copycat attempt at a Marvel, DC or any other fictional hero that is well established. Though it fits into the typical trope of the young superhero group genre, you know, of that youthful rebellion on tired of the rules and restrictions, we want to just do this on our own kind of style, it, it honestly stands on its own in my opinion. Especially the concept of a group of Christian heroes especially in the world of the remnant if this, if this is your first rodeo on any of the remnant videos you are missing a lot of context and i heavily advise to go check out some of the other stuff but if you know like the context of the remnant universe having a youth group as christian superheroes is like an it's another plus in my book for the series the theological basis which refers to how well Christian principles, theology, and scripture is adapted into a piece of Christian fictional work 3 out of 5. This wasn't really a theologically heavy issue, but I do love the overshadowing of the opening monologue and the entire issue with 1 Timothy 4 verse 12 which says, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. The last gen just has a rebellious phase youth group vibe. They have been raised to love the Lord and each seem to have their own growing relationship with him but just want a little escape from the rules and restrictions from time to time. Something I feel we all go through at some point, whether we actually express it outwardly or keep it internally and give it to God. And lastly, my enjoyment and how likely I am to recommend it is a 2.5 out of 5. It was a fun read and a nice introduction to the younger heroes of the Remnant universe. But the fact that Jellybean's section had a literal in-panel errors was a bit baffling. Don't know if it was meant for emphasis, which is a weird line to put emphasis on, or unintentional. I'm leaning into it being more unintentional. And with the scoring system that I have expressed in our previous coverages of the series, 
Consistent errors in paid comics is an instant point deduction. But other than that, I really enjoyed this first issue of The Last Gen. So overall, Last Gen issue 0 gets a 3 out of 5. I'm really looking forward to the future issues and see where the story goes. Let me know what you think of the comic based on what was discussed in the comments below. Links to purchase the Remnant comics will be in the description, as my breakdown will never be able to do the story and artwork justice, as well as encouraging you to support and buy these Christian alternatives to the current landscape of fiction that is progressively getting worse with blatantly twisting the word of God and introducing all manners of things into the stories that even non-Christians are sick and tired of. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more of these videos that are aimed to push these comics that actually present great Christian values and messages in an entertaining way that doesn't come across as cringy or too preachy in my opinion. If you enjoyed the video to the point you are looking to check out another one of our videos, then you can click the card at the top right hand corner of your screen to continue down the remnant playlist or check out the time Anaki suffered a really nasty bite in a fight against some really huge locusts summoned by a discount Mortal Kombat character.